multi-talented Derek Young. He is a wonderful actor slash director. And he's going to be telling us about some of his past projects and what he has coming up in the future. So without any further ado, um, I'll just jump right into the questions um, with you, Derek. And some gloves that I've made from the time I started as a filmmaker to now, so it's going to be awesome. Right. Now, um, okay, because I wanted to get into to a few things to get into, but I, I wanted to get into family property in just a second but first let me ask you when did you originally get into um filmmaking or how did you get into it well uh next story i started out acting in short films with my friends and uh at one point um we were sitting down and uh getting ready to do a feature film and everything kept falling apart um and the guy that was the one that had been studying filmmaking and really wanted to make a movie mm -hmm. Um, get feeling like we couldn't do it. So I made Family Property um, the first time, you know, my first film. I went ahead and made it to just try and show him that if I could make something like this together, we could make something awesome, mm -hmm. you know, and then we could pull it off. Um, and so I did that and ended up getting the bug for filmmaking and, uh, haven't really slowed down since okay now uh with you know because I, I looked at the cover to um uh, family property back was killing and look the the cover is it, catchy within itself uh, you know what i mean like there's this family they look like they live in the backwoods uh, what's happening in that film are people you know going on vacation and kind of getting trapped off how did how does that go how what's the plot to that this dad who knows that the cops are coming for him uh -huh. and he makes his son promise that if anything happens to him and anybody steps foot on the property afterwards that he would kill them <laughs> and in order to protect their property mm -hmm. and 10 years passed because the kid was real young at the time but 10 years passes by after the dad dies and then people start stepping on the property. Some kids decide to throw a lathe there. Um, and then there's a, actually a family that uh, decide it actually that it came up for sale. This family ends up buying the place in order to try and flip it and make money off of it. Um, and it turns into a fun whirlwind of uh, death. I actually made that film um, as a star film for horror fans um so anybody as young as the age of six can watch it because i made it with no nudity little gore and uh barely any language because mm -hmm. i wanted kids to be able to have something they could start off with for horror films oh wow and, uh, that's and, not and it's worked you know it's worked um but now when you get into family property too there's going to be lots of gore nudity <laughs> okay okay so so that's that's the turn that that's more like the, the side for the grown-ups but you know what that's pretty cool like not often i mean i you know I, I could be wrong but not often you know do you see horror films you know that are actually put together like like family property that are still child friendly you know yeah well you know i wanted to what is it i wanted to do paying homage to the films of old Mm -hmm. So I did all old school effects where I left everything to your imagination. Basically, mm -hmm. you see what's going on, but you don't really see the massive goriness of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's more comical than anything because I wanted it to be. Um, but, you know, like I said, Family Property 2 is going to be way different. It's going way over the top. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that that's going to be that's going to be the one that's going to have people kind of like covering their eyes and like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe that just happened to him. And, you know, yeah, well, uh, there's, there, in family property, too, there's a guy that gets his head cut off with a lawnmower. Oh, there's, man. Um, there's a girl that if you remember the old tools they used to bore holes with, it just looked like giant corkscrews. Yeah. Um, there's a girl that actually gets one of those in the eyeball. Oh, man. Um, and th I've actually still have a few deaths to film, and we've already used up 10 gallons of blood for all of the death scenes we have filmed. 
Holy so, moly. So, yeah, so we 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 actually the, the special effects artist said he's never been on a film mm. film set that's been so gory. Mm. Um and he actually started throwing out the tagline, more blood, because every time I would collar for it, I would say, Hey, bring me some more blood, more blood, <laughs> more, bring me more blood and he said, Yeah, the next time he came on set he just got out of his car and he just yelled, More blood so then I was like, Well, since the distribution company threw that semi colas back with killing spree on family property. Uh-huh. When I go into part two I can sh- change what's after the semicolon so then I threw in more blood at the end of it so oh. yeah he's real happy that that kind of stuck around okay okay right so you could okay that, that's a good idea so you was actually able to just kind of you know kind of incorporate that in it, it actually sounded good going with it anyway more blood and since um the concept includes more blood that just kind of worked out right oh yeah it, it worked out great and okay. you know, it's funny, I never really, never really set out to uh, go forward on uh, having as high of a body count as we've gotten with this. <laughs> um, I was actually going to be doing a smaller body count yeah. than I was, you know, than I did with my third film. Uh-huh. Um, with my third film, I actually ended up having, um, called Psychotic State, I ended up having a, a body count of 31 and hit oh, and uh, then turned around and worked with the guys that um, we turned around and I worked with the, the guy who wrote the Camp Crystal Lake novels in the 90s and we novelized the movie now the movie hasn't came out yet but the book is and the, it's funny because with a body count of 31 you would think how could things get more but when you read the book mm-hmm. the the book is actually a little more in depth and detail and a little more grotesque. The kills are better than what we were able to pull off with funds for the movie. The, it's just amazing. Right. And um, just real fun. Now, as a matter of fact, okay, now, speaking about the book, um, you know, Psychotic State now, okay, there's David. Now, David, I'm assuming he's like the main character. He's going to be the guy. He's going to be the little kid that's going to grow up and, and, and start the mayhem, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that's David Coleman. I actually played the character in the film. Oh. And the thing that happens is he spends his whole life being picked on, beat up, and bullied until he gets to a point where he loses his job and can't take his bipolar medication anymore. And then he goes in and after that happens okay after that happens it sits back and you think about it and you're like you know well god what else can this guy take so then he's sitting and he's not on his medication and he gets bullied one more time and he snaps and decides to stand up for himself and when he does he kills the bully but it feels so good to him that he becomes a serial killer and he starts trying to get his bullies back and Okay, okay, so he's kind of, you know, he, he's, he's doing his dirt. He, he's taking these people out, but at the same time, he's he's serving a purpose that to him he feels like is a worthy cause. Exactly. And, and you know, I actually, in the book, you know, with the book and, and with my film, I tell everybody, you know, I don't condone the character doing what he does. Mm-hmm. Um but I just wanted to show one extreme that actually happens because of bully, mm-hmm. you know? Right. And so I actually have this full anti-bully message with it. And as a matter of fact, with the film, I encased the film um, with, with public service announcements against bullying right. at the beginning and at the end that um, were done by a lot of different celebrities. Right. And so you- I got those cameos wrapped around the film to the and, and you know what I mean you know is 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 good you know it's already good to really give that message you know about you know the anti-bully message but at the same time hey it's it's a horror you know it's it's in the horror genre I assume so these people had to be killed off and they had to be I mean that was the point of the movie so it had to be done though right like oh exactly but you know it's real cool and then you know it's uh I actually was able, um, 
it was funny because while I was working on that, I went to Mad Monster Party in Charlotte, and I ended up um, being able to become a part of Toxic Tutu as well, which is a mockumentary that is wrapped around Melvin the Mop Boy, which uh, was played by Mark Torval and the fact that he'd been gone for 30 years and where he's been and his return to the industry um, in form of going to conventions. And there's been a lot of great names coming on board with that film. As a matter of fact, Johnny Fairplay, who ended up doing Family Property 2 for me as well, um, Joe Gardelli is the guy making Toxic 2 2, and I came in and I acted in it, and then he let me kind of grow, and I've been helping him out. I ended up becoming production manager and then associate producer by everything that I put together for him. Right. Um, but Fairplay, um, He's from Hollywood Story, followed him around for a week to do his true Hollywood story. And it was awesome because they went, it, they happened to have a film shoot set up in Portland uh-huh. during a wrestling event that Fairplay was doing. And so there's a 12 second spot inside of that E True Hollywood Story where Toxic Duzu is mentioned. Um, so it's, uh, and they actually shared some of the film shoot. So, now a project that I'm part of has been blasted all over each your Hollywood story um, for the past couple of weeks. Oh, wow. Um, been on E, so that's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Uh, and, and Toxic Tutu, uh, you know, to, to get into that a bit. Now, Toxic Toxic Tutu, can, can you go? Now, that's to be released in what? Or is, is the ETA is 2015, I believe? Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what Joe's looking at is having everything finally finished and out. You know, out there for screening at conventions um, and at festivals mm-hmm. in 2015. You know, he's going to start shopping around for distribution. Um, but I know he's going to travel the convention and festival circuit with it. And uh, I can't wait for that one to come out because uh, there's a lot of great things that I hope set up with it. Okay. And, um, okay. you know, I, I just can't wait to see the final product. Now, is this, uh, is this going to be involving a, a literally a, a toxic tutu or is there somebody wearing a tutu that's toxic how, how is that going down dirt well no there, there's a lot of people wearing tutus throughout the whole film because if you've never seen the toxic avenger oh. um that was a mop boy with this mop with this nerdy kid who with a mop you know he went around mopping up the school and everything else and he wore a tutu uh-huh and everybody always made fun of him, one the bullies that picked on him and ended up dumping him into a bad and toxic waste, and he became the Toxic Avenger, right. which um, ended up spanning out into four films. They're now going into the fifth Toxic Avenger. Hollywood actually went to Wood Kaufman out of their term of films, and he, uh, they bought the rights to do the remake to the first one. And there was also a cartoon series that came out with the Toxic Avenger in it called the Toxic Crusaders, and there was this whole toy line and everything it was a massive hit in the 80s. And um, it still has a massive cult following. And the Toxic Tutu, like I said, is, it's following the guy who played Melvin the Mob Boy and kind of telling the story. Uh, it, it's shot like a documentary, but it's not a documentary. Um, and, you know, it's going to be kind of sweet because it's following him around after he finally had came back after being gone for 30 years. Oh, wow. And it's, it falls into trying to find out where he's been and why he's been hiding and everything else. Mm-hmm. So it's it's going to be pretty sweet. I can't, I can't wait for the Toronto fans and the Toxic Avenger fans to be able to see that. Okay. Now... Okay, so so Derek, I mean, you're you're acting, you're directing. As a matter of fact, you've you've done acting, writing, uh, producing, and directing. Now, I know you love to do them all. Do you have a favorite? Like, let's say acting. Do you do you like to do the acting more because you you know you get to get in there and play those roles, or you know, or, or is the writing just harder? Which one is your favorite? My favorite thing is actually the directing and putting the film together. Okay. Um, mainly because. When you're acting, you're sitting around all day waiting for the director to get done with what they're, what they're doing, put you in front of the camera and go get it. But when you're directing, when you're on set, it, it's a non-stop process. You never stop working. You're constantly going, going, and going, and going. Mm-hmm. You know? So I sit back and look at that, and, and, and for me, that's my favorite. 
every thing because it just constantly you have to sit back and look and fix problems and address things and keep going and try to make things work. And when things fall apart, you got to pick it up and put the pieces together any way you can mm-hmm. just so that you can finish your film. And those challenges uh, make it make it very fun. And it's aggravating sometimes, but at the, in the end, when you finally get it finished and you have people watching it and enjoying it, and they tell you how good of a job you did, there's no better feeling. Right. So it's, it's like it's like that, you know, being able to have that that rush and never really getting to wind down, but constantly, you know, being able to use your creativity and just the challenge behind it all, too. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's one thing, too, like um, I, I'm a lot of people really don't know this about me, but I'm not just in film. Right. Um, when I was younger, I actually recorded a country rap album. Oh wow! Um, and I was—I actually had—I ended up picking up a manager in Nashville, Tennessee, and he shopped me around. All of the record labels said that it wouldn't sell. A year later, out come Cowboy Troy with his first country rap album, mm-hmm. and one of the labels that had got that said it wouldn't sell was the ones that got him to do it. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, then about six months after he did that, how come Bubba Sparks? So yeah. I got I got a feeling had you know, I am actually grateful that I that, that didn't pan out that led into me going into film instead of music. Uh-huh. Um, so that I actually have a lot of different things I can play with now instead of just trying to focus on music. But, you know, I'm still in the music. I write my own theme songs. I um, write theme songs in the middle of the films all the time. I'm, you know, I'm constantly working on things. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm a, such a rounded person that I can get in any project I want to. Yeah, um, yeah, that makes good sense as a matter of fact because, like you say, you know, then then you've definitely got your own soundtracks. I mean, when you come with an idea, you're able, if you want to, to be able to put the music behind it. You, you know, uh, do you have any plans of maybe still putting something out musically one day? Um, well, it's funny, like, um, as a matter of fact, I, the album that I recorded never got released. Mm. Um, and so last week, um, I made contact with the people that were on it all. And there was, a, there was one person that was on it I couldn't contact because he passed away about six months after the recording. Mm. But, um, I contacted everybody else and we all agreed upon it. So... I went ahead and released it through CD Baby, and I'm waiting on um, the Amazon stuff to finish so that it can come, so that it can be on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the title of the album was Welcome to FC. Um, it, it's a fun album. I gave about 10 copies away of it to people at Fairham College mm-hmm. while I was uh, DJing and uh, running a restaurant that was right near them. And within a matter of three days, every single person on campus had a copy of it, had the lyrics memorized, and we're singing along with it at the biggest party in, at, at the college. Oh, there was about 500 kids there just banging out my music when I showed up. It was awesome. Um, but so I got that sitting. It you know it's starting to slowly launch out in places. Right. Um, and I'm getting ready. Hopefully, come the first of the year, um, spring next year, I'm getting ready to get back in the studio for the first time in a long time. So okay, well we'll look. We'll be looking forward to it. And uh, you know, when you do when you do put those projects uh, together, Derek, make sure you sh- shoot some of the tracks this way so we can get them in rotation on the station as well, man. Oh yeah, no, that's not a problem, man. Uh, right. Matter of fact, I might shoot you one or two of the tracks from that other album. You can yeah. listen to it and see what you think. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. It was my very. I actually performed for ten years Mm -hmm. off of those songs, even though the album never came out. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a festival. I went to them. I played them my music, and uh, I got paid to do their do their festival for ten years in a row. Oh um, man! Same songs. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's big. Ten years strong like that. Yeah, so, you know, it was, it was real cool, but then, you know, I kind of branched out from the music, and after, 
you know, everything fell through with the manager dropping me because none of the albums wanted to take it. Right. You know, none of the record labels wanted to take the album. They didn't think it would sell. Mm-hmm. But then again, a year later, you know, they started popping people out left and right and was doing the same thing I was. Yeah, I guess I, th- that's how it was. Like you know, years ago, I guess they didn't really. A lot of times, labels back in the day didn't didn't really think about just how broad that type of music would actually get. So they actually underestimated it. But nowadays, you know, independent music is just as large as the um the big labels. So you should definitely go for it, Derek. Yeah, so you know, I got all that. By the way, you know, I, I was gonna mention to you. Um, I know you kind of. I'm in Martinsville, Virginia. I don't think it's too far from where you at. It's not. Um, <laughs> so, I was going to mention something to you. Yeah. Um, in December mm-hmm. the 20th, I'm going to be filming the last scene for Family Property 2, and I'm also filming a scene for Toxic Tutu. Okay. And I got a few celebrities coming in, mm-hmm. and we're gonna, uh, I'm going to have an autograph sign and set up in Sportland in Martinsville. Mm-hmm. You know what, Dirk? That sounds like a plan to me. Um, I'll make sure I'll put that on the on the calendar, and we'll we'll talk. Um, we'll talk again after the after the interview. Um, tonight or tomorrow, and we will line that up, and I'll make sure that I come up there. I'd love to get a trip there, and like you say, we'll we'll knock out some. Um, you know, we'll knock out some interviews, and we'll get to do some interviews with you on. You know, right there live on the scene too. Oh yeah, well, if you can, you yeah. be there. We're gonna have some crazy. Oh man, I can't. Like right now, I know. Right now, I know we're gonna have Mike Halleck, who was Mantar in the WWE. He's gonna be on hand, um, and he was also the Truth Commission in ECW. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna have uh, WWE Hall of Famer and Legend, the Boogie Woogie Man. Oh man. Jimmy Valiant, yeah. and um. We're going to have one of the walkers from The Walking Dead, and he's been a featured extra and actor and a lot of other stuff. Jeremy Ambler, he's going to be on hand. Yeah. Um, he was uh, he's a featured extra in the American Pie and the Reunion. He was in Killing Linky. He was in uh, Pro Wrestling vs. the Zombies. Uh, he's been in a bunch of stuff. He was in the first family property, and so uh, he's actually coming back. And even though he died in the first one, he's coming back and playing his own twin brother. Oh, wow. um, so he's coming back in on the cast so he's going to be around um, i got a cool special effects artist that's going to be there um, I'm going to be on hand we're going to have uh, adult star uh, Nadia White she used to, her name used to be Ariel with the one okay. um, she's going to be on hand and um, it's going to be a fun, a fun little event and filming weekend for sure that's uh, that. what I know, right? Like the, the full of holiday cheer. That sounds like a plan to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. people can come out. You know, if, if you're in the if you're near the area of Marshall, Virginia, you can come out. And, you know, meet some celebrities, get some autographs, take some photos. You know, with the autographs, you get that purchase some merch. So, right. if you know somebody that's a wrestling fan and an adult fan or anything like that, you can get Walking Dead fans. Um, Okay. Any horror fan, you know, you come up, pick up some merch, get the stuff autographed, and then you got a Christmas present for somebody. Yeah. You know, that's that's not your regular present. You know, so it's, that, it's that, pretty sweet. That's, that sounds like a going on. Um, you know, and and I'll try to be in the building, and also what I'll make sure I do is um, you know, I'll keep plugging that on the show too, and letting people know that that's going on. Um, you know, in case people want to go up and check it out, or you know, other people in the Virginia area and surrounding areas as well. So we look forward to that. Um, now, before we get out of here, Dirk, let everybody know, um, you know, just kind of, you know, give some shout outs and let people know where they can go to, you know, to watch your past um, projects and, and, you know, look for the new ones coming up. Well, um, you can, I, I make a Facebook page for every film I make. Um, my first film was Family Property back with Killing Spree. My second was Midnight 
late night thing. It's like the third psychotic state. Of course, my four, four films, Family Property, Two More Blood. If you look me up on um, IMDb, um, Derek Young with the with the, the V for the number five symbol. Um, that'll show all the stuff I was part of because I was a zombie in Plan Nine, which should be coming out next year. Um, which was the direct re- to plan, remake to Plan Nine from Outer Space. Um, you know, so you can look all that up on Facebook. Look up the Derek Young fan page on Facebook. You can get that up. Um, like I said, CD Baby, you can actually uh, go download that album now. Um, and if you do a Google with my first two film titles, um, you can find the movies anywhere. Um, almost every major retail site has my films. Uh, the first film is on every retail, retail site but Walmart. The second film is on every retail site, including Walmart. As a matter of fact, it is on all the shelves of FYE across the nation. Um, so people can pick that stuff up there. And as far as the Psychotic State, the novel, it is actually out right now on Amazon for Nook. It's, it's for Nook. It's for um, Kindle. Um, it's on Barnes and Noble dot com. Um, so it it's out there and available for everybody to get. Um, and the link to my website is on my Facebook page. And I got different individual sites for every film as well, and it's on their Facebook page. Okay. All right. So look, that's good news. Listen, everybody out there listening all across the world, it, it, you can pick them up everywhere pretty much <laughs> like you know at all your, your local spots and like you said you know check the facebook uh, pages as well because then you can find the links and you can you know go from there and find the locations and things of that um listen Dirk, we we thank you for coming through today very honored to have you um i'll see you in december and we look forward to you coming back on the show soon as a matter of fact yeah, yeah i appreciate it keith and uh that uh just whenever you want me to come back through, man, and I'll hit you up and okay. we'll have a little fun. All right, that sounds like a plan. And look, we're still looking for the out. We, we still, look, get them tracks to me too, uh, Derek, so I can put them on the air, man. Let's get some of that going. All right, man. Sounds good to me. Okay, all right. I'll see you later, Keith. You have a good night, man. You do the same. Be blessed, Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. That was the wonderful actor, very talented actor and director, Derek Young, right here on the Keith Harris Show, Global Network, Hotline Radio.net. You guys stay tuned. We'll be back.